All right, we're back on the 85 IROC Camaro project. We got some more cool products to talk about. So we're gonna do a little bit of unboxing here. We got some really cool stuff from Nuke Performance. Uh, we got a ARE dry sump uh, oil tank, a couple of little doodads, and a surprise under the blanket here. So stay tuned. All right, let's tear into these Nuke Performance boxes. I'm pretty excited to see this stuff. They got some really cool stuff. So these guys are really good to work with. Nuke Performance stepped up and gave us a pretty steep sponsorship on this thing. So shout out to Nuke Performance. We'll be using more stuff for sure, especially once we see how cool it is. So, oh, you gotta love it when they send candy. You know it's a good one then. Oh, look at this, man. They, man, they got all the details. Look, they got legit weeded stickers on here vinyl cut stickers white and black that's pretty dope all right so we're gonna have to put one of those on there in case you guys don't know what their logo looks like this is them find them on instagram nuke performance they got all kinds of stuff they got fuel surge tanks competition fuel cell unit air jacks fuel filters fuel pressure regulators oil catch cans all kinds of cool stuff for your race applications. All right, I believe these guys are across the pond, but uh, I don't know if they, sh if they have a warehouse in the States or not, but this stuff showed up really fast and check it out. We got Nuke Performance Swag in the house. All right, man, they loaded us up. Got some shirts here. Nuke Performance Sweden, that's where they're at. So I'm excited to uh, collaborate with these guys. Even sent us a big banner. We're gonna have to hang that up somewhere. A couple of banners, it looks like. Oh yeah, check that out. We'll have those up for next time. All right, so that's the swag box. Let's get into this one. This is the serious one here. What we got here, there's something. Oh, that's a different package. Haha, <laughs> that's a different thing I ordered. Uh, not from Nuke, but I was wondering where those were at. Now I know. <laughs> All right, check this out, guys. Nuke Performance Air Jacks. I am super stoked to use those. I've never put air jacks on anything. Oh, dang, they threw these in. I didn't order those. That's even better, man, when they throw in free, free parts that you didn't order. Man. All right, so these are, I don't know what they call these. These are their Nuke Performance Air Jacks. So this is the basically the stop. Once you air it up, you put this in there and set the weight of the car down on these for safety. Instead of having a jack stand, these locate on the air jacks. So that is really cool. So there's four of those in this case. We got some airline, and then here's the jacks. Dang, the thing's bigger than I thought it was gonna be. Check that out. Nuke Performance Air Jacks. Now, if that doesn't get you going, I don't know what it does, man, but that's just cool. Imagine having that underneath your chassis, hit a switch, psh, jack the whole car up. You don't even need a floor jack. This thing will lift your car about a foot in the air. Then you put those jack stands under it. Super cool. So from what I understand, it uses very low air pressure to lift a lot of weight real fast. So you can either hook this up to an onboard air system with an air pump and air tank, or you can hook it up to external shop air. So I haven't decided which route I'm gonna go yet. Probably the external shop air because I don't really wanna mess with a compressor and a tank and everything on here. But um, we'll see, we might change our mind on that. But this stuff is really nice. It's got these threaded collars for adjustability. Very cool. Everything is super nice. Detailed, it's got the laser engraved etching on there. Black anodized finished with clear anodized finished on the on the silver parts. That's nice. All right, so we got four of those. All right, last box from Nuke. More goodies. All right, we got more airline. It's got all the airline fittings in there. More airline with fittings. I'm not sure. We'll figure out where all that stuff goes later. More candy and stickers. Put that in the swag box. All right, what do we got here? Oh yeah, this is the, uh, so these are the, the, 
basically the weld-in mounting canisters that you can weld into your car. So they're deep enough where you can cut through the floor, you put them in there, you weld it in, and then the uh, air jacks fit up inside there. So those are pretty cool. Looks like they're tube laser cut. Very nice quality. All right, so we got four of those. All right, let's see, we got a spanner Allen wrench here for tightening the threaded collars on the air jacks. All of their packaging is really nice, you know, very nicely done. All right, what do we got here? So I'm opening it wrong. Gotta be smarter than the box. It's all padded real well. Look at that. beautiful little oil catch can with 90 degree inlets and outlets that thing is so good looking billet aluminum anodized satin black and it's got a little dipstick here that's pretty cool so that way you know Instead of just screwing off your canister every time to see how much oil's in there, you just take this out and then you know whether or not you need to empty it or not. And then when you do, you just screw off the bottom, dump it out. Very nice. Comes pre-lubed, so you don't have to worry about galling your threads. That's a nice part. All right, we're gonna wrap that one back up. For now what do we got next nuke performance oil filter this one is uh i can't tell by looking at the outside i got two of them so i got a 10 micron and a 100 micron this one is the 10 micron filter and i got them with the stainless elements which you can't really tell right now but i believe it's it's a rebuildable element you can unscrew the ends and there's a stainless mesh filter in there that's a nice part right there man it comes with its own mounting brackets, so you don't gotta try and figure out what kind of clamp to put on it. That's one of my pet peeves with some of these aftermarket fuel filters. You find a really cool fuel filter, inline fuel filter, but then you gotta hunt down the perfect clamp for it. And it's like, it takes a lot of time, you know? They, you know, it's just so cool that it comes with it. It's one less thing I gotta try and figure out. And then we got the other one, which I'm assuming is the same thing. It's just a uh, hundred micron. This one is the 100 micron, maybe a little overkill, but we're gonna run them both. So what I'm thinking is on this car, you know, and it depends on where they need to be in relation to the fuel system, but I'm thinking about like making them look cool when you pop the hatch in the trunk. So you can see these bad boys sitting back there with some real cool lines coming out of them right in your face. All right, so we're gonna put these on display because they're so beautiful. All right, what else we got? Nuke Performance AN-10 ORB to atmospheric air, air filter kit for the oil catch can. So this is just a bolt-on accessory that you can put on your oil tank. Look at that, man, that is so cool. I love that stamped steel cap for their filter. It's not just a generic filter. They're into the details, which is what we're into here at Hammer Fab. That's why I like their stuff. And then we got some other ORB fittings to go with all of this stuff. I'm not gonna get all those out right now because they have little O-rings and, and I don't wanna damage the, the threads on them and stuff, but we got those. There's a couple more. And then this is pretty cool here. This is their gas cap fuel fill kit comes with a fuel filler hose and a really cool looking billet cap so we're not going full race on this car but there's a few elements to this car that i want to have sort of a racy vibe to them so this is not a direct bolt-on part for an irock camaro but and i thought i kind of just guessed on the size of it you know i didn't I just figured, you know, we'll, we'll make it work. Or maybe we'll just use it on something else if it doesn't work on this car. So this is the mounting bracket for the fuel filler. Uh, looky here, it's got a cool little fuel stickers in here. Nuke juice, fun juice, magic potion, biohazard, race fuel, E85, E100, methanol, ethanol, gasoline, petrol, 98 octane, premium, or just some blank ones. And... I don't know where those go, but we'll figure it out. Oh, I, th I think they go on this, on this cap. So check this out, nice packaging again. Oh, ho, 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 ho. look at that. That's beautiful. Nice satin black finish on there. 
It's got an O-ring gasket, or, or uh, looks like a neoprene gasket. There's a, a cable lanyard down in there, which I'm not gonna get out right now. That thing is cool. Billet, no plastic junk. Look at that, it's got a nice feel to it. It's got a little like ball detent in there that's just satisfying to operate. And then you just take the cap out. Look at that, it's nice inside too. That is gonna go over here. Oh yeah, this is gonna work out perfect, okay? So this big dumb looking original gas cap bothers me. So we're gonna eliminate that. And so the nice thing is the body of the car is a smooth round opening where the tab is on the cap. So that's good. Sometimes the tab's on the body and then it would look weird. But in this case, it's a circle and this is a circle. So we can just retrofit, adapt this on here down inside the hole and make it look cool. So we'll probably, uh, what we'll do is we'll cut that filler neck off further down in there, connect it with the hose that they supply and recess this in the body. And then what we'll do to adapt it to the body, we'll design a part in the computer, probably 3D scan the car right there, design a 3D printed part, maybe even have it machined so that this bolts onto that part and then that part bolts onto the car and it'll look like it belongs. So I'm excited about that. That's gonna be cool. All right, we got a couple more little items here we're gonna unbox. So these are some really cool little latches from E3 Machine. Check them out on Instagram. He looks like he's starting out uh, doing some really nice machine work. Go give him a follow or like. Um, these are not designed for a Camaro. They're just really cool. And I was like, man, I gotta figure out how we can utilize those on something. I think originally he makes these for Jeeps for like the back gate and stuff. They're just really beefy looking latches. But he makes these mini ones and they, they don't do a whole lot, but they're super strong. And once you get them bolted down, I figured they'd make a cool hood latch pin. So I got two of those. He actually stepped up and sponsored us. So thank you. We're gonna make sure that we get some good use out of these. But what I'm thinking is instead of your conventional style hood pins, I'm thinking of putting these somewhere in the hood recess the hood, maybe we'll make a 3D printed pocket or a machine pocket if it needs to be beefier than that. Bolt these to it and then these will be flush with the surface of the hood. And that way before, you know, for high speed application, you have to release them like that before you can pop the hood. So I think those will look pretty cool if we can make them work. I'm thinking they might even look cool right there and right there. E3 machine, anodized aluminum with, uh, I believe they've got a titanium center link here. So very cool. All right, we got a couple more items here to go through. We've got this dry sump remote oil adapter that's gonna go on the LT4 engine. This will allow us to hook up the uh, oil lines from the engine to the dry sump, cool, uh, dry sump tank, not the cooler, the tank. Uh, and then this is the dry sump tank. This one was not sponsored, but very cool tank. Uh, I looked at several different ones and this is the one that I liked. It's, it's definitely a race car application, but it has uh, sort of a blend between a race car and, and the look of an OEM application. So that's why I got this one. ARE dry sumps, go check them out. They got all kinds of uh, dry sump tanks and stuff. These are made in America. I believe they're in California. Check this bad boy out. This thing is beautiful. Definitely not the cheapest tank, but you know, comparing compared to some of the other ones that were available, it wasn't that bad. And so one of the things I liked about this is it's got the cast aluminum base and the cast aluminum top. And if you notice it, it looks real similar to the OEM uh, Z06 Corvette tanks. I'm gonna be popping a wheelie out there. The other thing I wanted, I liked about this one is it has a billet aluminum cap um, that's anodized black. So I, I just, you know, if you're gonna do all this and make it nice, I just didn't want to put some chintzy generic looking stamped or plastic cap on there. So that's, I like that. And I believe it has a provision for a dipstick somewhere. I think one of these holes here, you can add a dipstick to it, but it's got, several ports on it you can make it do whatever you want it's 
pretty cool. It's got a couple of them capped here for our application that, that we won't need. So very nice part. And they have one that's a little taller than this, but after some rough measuring, I wasn't confident that it was gonna fit in the height of this because it's probably gonna have to go up here in the front somewhere. So especially if we lower the car, I don't want this thing hitting the ground or you know, get in a situation where it doesn't clear the hood. So that's why I went with this one. I believe this one's a 20 inch one. They have a 23 inch one. So very cool part. And let's see, what's it come with? Oh, I also got the clamps here with it. These are, you gotta buy these separately, but they are pretty nice too. They've got a nice billet, aluminum anodized black uh, mount to them. Looks like a laser cut stainless mount there. Those are really nice. And that's what we'll use to mount it in the car. And that's all we got for today. Oh, wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. We got that uh, surprise unit over here. All right, so this is the last thing we're gonna reveal today. Could easily go down a rabbit hole on this one. This is not engine related stuff, but if you remember, we are talking about the interior on one of our first episodes and how it has that cigarette burn in the driver's seat, which bugs the heck out of me. If it wasn't for that, I probably wouldn't be doing this, but I was able to locate a complete set of original IROC seats on eBay. I couldn't quite tell what color they were, you know, cause sometimes photos can throw you off, but I ordered them, I got them. They showed up and they look amazing, but they're a little bit darker shade of gray than what I currently have in the car. So these are really nice original IROC seats. The foam is like brand new on them. These have been sitting in dry storage for like 20 years. Um, they're just a little dirty. They've got some dirt on them. Once we clean them up, vacuum them up, they're gonna look like brand new. So we got the rear seats and the front seats are in great shape. So what that's gonna cause us to do though, I'm gonna have to do a carpet swap color to color match this cause I can't, I can't stand the light colored carpet with this. We're gonna do uh, possibly a headliner swap. I've got some samples coming from a place called stockinteriors.com. They sell all this stuff, but um, they sell the headliner, they sell the door panels, they sell the carpet, all the things you need. So, but it's hard to tell because they call the colors different things online like charcoal, ebony, dark gray, light gray, middle gray, you know. So I don't know what I have and I don't know what I need. So I ordered some samples. They do have that where you can order several samples. They'll send them to you so you can match it up before you place your order. So I'm going to do that. And one of the, the most important things I need to match is this carpet color. So I'm pretty sure that's a charcoal carpet color. Um, but I'm gonna make sure before I order it. And it's the, the, that's the back of the rear seat. And that's in really good shape. The only thing that's a little bit faded is the top of the back seat, which is common on these cars because they're right in the middle of that magnifying glass window. But I'm gonna try something on this. If anybody's got any tips on how to bring that back to life, I'd love to hear it in the comments. Um, I've had a little bit of experience with writ dye in the past. I might try and dilute some of that and lightly massage it in and try and bring this back to this darkness again. But if y'all got a better idea, let me know in the comments. Otherwise, the rear seat is in good shape. It's pretty much like brand new, it just needs cleaned. And then the, the front seats are in great shape. They're just dirty. They've got the same pattern that's in the car right now. So no burns, no cuts, no tears. And we're gonna have a darker interior, which to me, is a little bit beefier, a little bit more masculine. It's gonna match our center console, which will be black. We've got a black dash. And then, oh yeah, the plastic parts inside that are all light gray right now, we're gonna have Mr. Heath over in our paint department mix up some special sauce for that, some SEM interior paint, and we'll make all those plastic panels match whatever color we do for the carpet and everything. So, should make a pretty cool interior upgrade on a budget. I can't wait to see what it all looks like together, polished up and like brand new again. So we're probably gonna do a video on just the interior restoration. So stay tuned for that. 